And new tonight, a deadly shooting in the Taylor Berry neighborhood as city leaders discuss ways to reduce gun violence in another part of town. It's our top story on the night team. I'm Connie Leonard. Doug has the night off. Police responded to reports of a shooting just after five tonight on Taylor Boulevard in the Taylor Berry neighborhood. When officers arrived, they found a man in critical condition after being shot. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Right now, LMPD's homicide unit is investigating and they say all parties have been accounted for in that shooting. Well, the Louisville Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods held its first reports to the community tonight for the Russell, California and Parkland neighborhoods, reporting that gun violence is down all across Louisville. Well, tonight was the first of the monthly forums that are aimed at communities that are most impacted by gun violence. WHAS 11 night teams Alex Dieterer spoke with residents who tell us what they want to see in their neighborhoods. What we're showing overall is the trend of violence is going down. Over the last two years, Louisville has seen a 35% reduction of shootings. Despite this, leaders say there is still work to be done. Are our numbers too high? Absolutely. Is that comforting to people that have lost family members to violence? No. Is it comforting to people that live in the community that experience a large number of violence? No. But we have to remember that what we're doing is effective and we're moving in that right direction. Office for Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods Director Paul Callanan is now making sure to get ahead of the next curve by going to each of the neighborhoods most impacted by gun violence, starting Wednesday night in the Russell, California and Parkland neighborhoods. Ocean shared programs available report what trends they're seeing in the community. You know, it has to start with those that are in the community because they know what's working and they know what's not working. And had conversations with the people impacted most by gun violence, like Rob Jones, who was born in the Russell neighborhood. You see a lot of things that are being done are that's being put to place that is deterrent and also preventing. And like Quantez Gibson, who didn't want to be on camera. My concerns with the community are, are very real. I grew up in these areas, uh, West End area, Shawnee, and um, I want to see a change. And I know the mindset needs to change. And who wants to make sure people in these neighborhoods are seen and heard. A lot of young guys, they're not being reached, and I want to reach them and help them come to that change. Um, I believe in a lot of the programs Ocean has going on, and I respect them reaching out to the community because that's what needs to be done. So far in 2024, there have been 16 shootings in the Russell neighborhood, two in California, and three in Portland. But Callanan says these numbers don't show the whole picture. You look at measuring crime statistics for neighborhoods or locations, you need to look at a bigger, longer period of time and just saying this time last year we had seven shooters, this time we have this much, therefore it's projecting that's going to go higher. That's a false reading to look at because anything can happen. Gun violence is so complex. Over the last two years, Ocean has implemented around 60 new programs to address gun violence. In the Russell neighborhood, Alex Dieterer, the WHS 1119 on your side. The next Ocean report to the community will be next month for the Shawnee and Chickasaw neighborhoods. Louisville's mayor and police chief touted the latest FOP contract today. Right now, the department is facing a shortage of 280 officers, something the mayor's office hopes this contract addresses. The new contract includes issues like working conditions, job benefits, and pay increases. Those pay increases are already making an impact. Mayor Craig Greenberg says some former officers are now committing to return to the force after hearing new details. When he heard about this new contract, he decided that he is going to leave his job and come back to LMPD. So I firmly believe that while that is just one story, there are going to be many more like that. If passed, all LMPD officers would see an immediate 7% pay increase with another round of raises in July. With both parties agreeing to contract terms, all that's left is for Metro Council to vote on them. Out-of-town developers were seeking to develop about a dozen acres of land near Black Acre in J-Town. WMG Development wanted to bring grocery retail to Jefferson Town, but commissioners have the decision to pass the commercial rezoning. WHAS 11's Knights team's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie talked to those who were not pleased with the plan. WMG Development wants to bring a grocery store to the corner of Tucker Station Road and Taylorsville Road. The 12 acres of land sit just 800 feet away from Black Acre Farm. 
I really just don't think that this is necessary at all. Miranda Nickel lives across the street from the land. Not only does she say it's a threat to Black Acres wildlife, but she fears even more traffic coming to the area would be hectic. We already have to just wait for a kind soul who will stop and let us out during rush hour or during what we call the FedEx train at 10 o'clock in the morning. Nickel and more than 100 others back the Jeffersonian to hear more about the proposed development. Some wearing t-shirts in opposition of the plan. I'm concerned about that traffic. WMG developers share that the additional grocery retail of 55,000 square feet would bring road improvements to Tucker Station and Taylorsville Road. And we'll be able to create this historic district gateway. This is straight out of the plan. But commissioners were also concerned about the heavy flow of traffic. They questioned the developers about their traffic safety plan. Yeah, we will be doing a right turn lane from Tucker Station Road, extending the existing one all the way back. Before the commissioners voted, they gave the public their last chance to voice their position. Most were in opposition to the traffic issue, but also shared how the preservation of nature needs to remain. I really think that it's important for us to savor the wildlife and the history of our communities. Commissioners ultimately agreed voting not to pass rezoning in a three to two vote. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. Meanwhile, in Scott County, Indiana, a new project will also not move forward. 200 new homes were scheduled to be built on 64 acres of farmland in Scottsburg. However, after a meeting tonight, developers decided to pull their petition and leave the land as agricultural for two reasons, resident complaints and the developer discovered a lucrative alternative for the land. Initially, we thought R1. However, offers from potential out-of-state buyers have proven that our price per acre is greater for use as agriculture and therefore we do not wish to proceed with our request. Developers went on to say that they had some plans in the works to bring a poultry farm, which they say with the right marketing and support has the opportunity to become a household name. The primary elections are fast approaching and the field to replace Ja'Cory Arthur on Metro Council is stacked. Arthur's seat is up for grabs after the independent councilman announced that he would not be running for re-election. Tonight, candidates for District 4, which covers much of downtown, pitched how they would address major concerns in the district. Tonight's forum was unique in that candidates were behind a screen so that residents would only hear their answers and not see their faces. So to do it blindly is because we wanted the people to hear what they had to say, not what they looked like. You know, I just wanted it to be a fair, a fair field, you know, and I think that this way it was able to hear what the, they had to say that wasn't distracted by their looks. The deadline to register to vote for May's primaries is Monday. Tonight's forum, by the way, was moderated by our very own Travis Breeze. We are learning new details about a lawsuit filed against the University of Kentucky and its former swim coach, Lars Jorgensen. Today, former assistant coach Briggs Alexander spoke out about why he filed the suit. Alexander filed it along with an anonymous former Kentucky swimmer last week. That suit alleges Jorgensen sexually assaulted the swimmers and the school purposely disregarded multiple reports of inappropriate and sexual relationships. Today, Alexander said. I was just repeatedly discouraged and vigorously discouraged to not come forward and to not, you know, publish this um, reporting. And as a professional, I gave my heart and soul to the team and to the program and to Mitch Barnhart and Lars Jorgensen. And it hurts to say that none of that, <clears throat> excuse me, none of that mattered um, because they just wanted to win. They wanted medals. Along with Jorgensen, the lawsuit names the university and athletic director Mitch Barnhart as defendants today. In response, the university sent out statements saying that they were distressed to hear about the allegations in the suit and are cooperating with law enforcement. They go on to say, we do not tolerate these types of behaviors. We will do everything possible to ensure the safety and well-being of our students, faculty and staff. 
Derby 150 is now only two weeks out, and one of the biggest names in the sport is still waiting to find out if he'll be able to compete this year. Bob Baffert trained horses are currently banned from running at Churchill Downs because of the ban. Baffert's horse, Muth, who won the Arkansas Derby earlier this year, did not get the 100 points that would automatically qualify for the Kentucky Derby. Zidane Racing Stables, which owns the horse, is now suing Churchill Downs, claiming that ban has no basis in fact or law. And with Derby fast approaching, the judge is looking to make a decision quick. I will write an opinion, promulgate it to the electronic, electronic filing system that we now all use for civil uh, uh, matters in Kentucky and you'll know sometime before the end of the week. Once we get a ruling in this case, we will be sure to update you on air and online.